I'm going to call the case of Commonwealth versus Sean Steins, 24F-147, on for preliminary hearing. Is the Commonwealth ready? Yes, Your Honor. Is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. All right, call your first witness. Commonwealth's Clayton Stamper. All right, click Mr. Stamper, if you would. Raise your right hand for me. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so if you got it? Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Clayton Stamper. And how do you spell your name? Uh, C L A Y T O N S T A M P E R. Do you know the court how you're employed? I'm sorry. How are you employed? I'm a detective with the Kentucky State Police assigned to Post 13 Hazard. How long have you been employed in that capacity? Uh, I've been with KSP a little over 24 years, uh, detective since 2006. And have you, uh, in the performance of duties of the Texas Police, have you uh, investigated the death of uh, Kevin Mullins? Yes, sir, I did. And can you tell us on what date that was? It was uh, September 19th, 2024. Uh, in investigation of that death, were you able to determine who killed Kevin Mullins? Yes. And how were you able to do that? Uh, video surveillance footage. And did you retrieve that video surveillance footage? I did. You know, at this time, the company will be playing video footage. All right. That was uh, Sheriff Mickey Steins and Judge Kevin Mullins. <clears throat> and also, uh, who had the firearm? Uh, Sheriff Steins. And then uh, Judge was also in his black robe. Yes. It, do you know what part, portion of the courthouse that is? That is the judge's chambers. And where's that located at, physically located? In the Letcher County Courthouse. That was a short clip that was played there. How, how long do you believe that clip was? That we just watched? Yes, sir. Just uh, 10 seconds, 15 seconds? 10, 15 seconds. Uh, in fact, the video that was taken in the judge's chambers between the meeting between Sheriff Steins and Judge Mullins, um, it's my understanding that video lasted much longer, correct? Yes. Okay. And have you had an opportunity to review the video I have. of the prior incident? I have. And can you describe for us what happened immediately prior to the clip that we saw? Uh, Sheriff Steins is, uses his telephone to make some phone calls. He then borrows Judge Mullen's cell phone and appears to make a call on that. And that led to what you just saw. I was told that the judge made a statement to Mickey about do we need to meet private in my chambers. That's all I was told. Do you know the context of I do what not. the conversation was before that they would need to discuss in chambers? I do not. So it's my understanding that in the larger portion of the video that we haven't uh, had access to that there is a point when Sheriff Steins asked for um, to see the telephone of Judge Mullins. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Yes, okay. And uh, I would presume that uh, you and the other officers you mentioned when you uh, secured the scene that you secured those phones as well is that correct yes and uh, have you reviewed 
both of those phones? Uh, they're currently at the forensic lab at this time being downloaded. I have had discussions with uh, the people at the lab regarding the downloads. And those are a couple of other questions that I was going to ask you, but my original question was, have you reviewed or are you aware of the content of the phones? I've not personally seen it because I've not received those reports yet. Okay, again, based upon your conversations with the officers, are you aware of any recent content that was up and could have been relevant at the time of their discussion? Uh, I was told that uh, Sheriff Steins had tried to call his daughter, and he had tried to call his daughter from the judge's phone also. So, um, have, you had, have you obtained the phone records from Judge Mullins' phone? I don't have those in my possession yet, no. Okay. Have you uh, issued a search yeah, warrant for yeah, them? Yes. Okay. And uh, have officers confirmed that the sheriff's daughter's phone number was on Judge Mullins' phone? Yes. Okay. So, yes. So that number had been called from Judge Mullins' phone? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So we don't have a viewing of what transpired during that exchange of phones, but based upon your review of those moments prior to, when Sheriff Steins observes that cell phone, is it a, was he previously seated? Yes. Okay, so in the clip we saw him standing the entire time. He was seated in front of the judge's desk. And he looks at the cell phone. What is? It? Can you describe his reaction in the video that we haven't seen? Whose reaction? Well, the sheriff. You can't see his face in the video. Okay, but is it clear that, does it appear to you that, oh, let me rephrase this. Did he stand up after yes. looking at the phone? He stood up. And how long after he looked at the cell phone and stood up did this occur that you played? Just seconds. Um, you know, I think that I left the hearing today with a lot of questions still unanswered myself. We hoped that uh, uh, there may be more light that, had, that will be shed on the preceding events, but uh, uh, but again, uh, this is district court. It's it's a preliminary hearing, and, and we certainly look forward to addressing the entire version upstairs. And I respect that, but it did come up during the hearing that, that mm -hmm. the, the daughter's number was on Judge Bones' phone, uh, and that he attempted to call his daughter on both phones while he was there. Right? I mean, that's what I. The acoustics are not great, but that's what I heard. So. I'll, I'll, I'll let the I'll let the tape speak for itself, and I don't want to comment. Uh, Bill, respectfully, at no, this I'm point, on, just, on what that might mean. Since it came up, I just want to Is that daughter a minor? I, I, I don't want to comment on that. I'm sure that there, you can ascertain that, uh, uh, her age from other things, but I don't want to comment on the daughter.